So, until recently, computer-generated imagery was mainly used for movies that focus on action, fantasy, or superheroics. But as cinema keeps on evolving, so too do the tools of the medium. In today's world, green screen, motion capture, and CGI are used more than ever. But what's interesting about this development is how you can usually tell if a movie is good or not based purely upon the quality of their special effects. If the computer-generated imagery is unpolished, it's a sure sign the film isn't up to snuff. But every now and again, a movie movie will come along that the whole world will fall in love with, despite the fact that the VFX really aren't up to standard. And that's what we're here to talk about today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 great movies with terrible CGI. Number 10. Deep Blue Sea In Deep Blue Sea, a group of marine explorers battle a school of super-intelligent sharks. Now, based on that storyline alone, you'd assume that this will be a dumb B-movie in the same vein as Birdemic or Maximum Overdrive, right? But even though Deep Blue Sea could have been trashy schlock, it's elevated by an excellent cast, including Samuel L. Jackson, LL Cool J, and Thomas Jane. On top of that, it's got some genuinely great jump scares, including when Stellan Skarsgård's character gets his arm ripped off by a great white. But let's not forget what Deep Blue Sea is best remembered for, which is after Jackson's character gives an uplifting monologue, a shark comes out of nowhere and rips him to pieces. Because you genuinely don't see it coming, this moment is regarded as one of the best jump scares in cinema. That's why it's rather ironic how the film's defining moment happens to have the worst special effect. Not only does the computer-generated shark look like it's composed of rubber, Jackson's CG counterpart looks hilariously unfinished and contorts its limbs like a ragdoll rather than a human being. Number 9. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Contrary to popular belief, there was way less computer-generated imagery in Harry Potter than you would actually believe. Many moments that seemingly rely on CGI use alternative SFX like scaling, animatronics, puppetry, green screen, wire work, and forced perspective. The reason why the directors of the franchise limit digital effects is because they're expensive and time-consuming. But another reason why CGI wasn't commonly used is, well, it makes everything look a bit crap, especially in the first film. In Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry and Ron get into a scuffle with a troll in a bathroom. Because this is the first monstrous creature that we've seen up close, this should feel like a magical and scary moment for the viewer. But because of the ogre's janky movements and blurred animations, he looks downright shoddy. To add insult to injury, Harry is blatantly replaced with a CG image in certain shots, making the whole scene feel less believable. Number 8. Spider-Man Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was the first movie in history to earn $100 million in its opening weekend. Even though the trilogy ended on a bit of a downer, there are legions of fans who preferred this incarnation of Spider-Man over the MCU version. But the biggest lovers of the first film can't deny the fact that the visual effects are subpar. Ironically, most of the worst CGI moments come from Peter Parker being, you know, Spider-Man. When the web-slinger leaps from building to building, he looks like a rubber man with Tobey Maguire's face stitched on. When Green Goblin is terrorizing the citizens, his unnatural movements make him resemble a cartoon character. Even though we should be in awe watching the wall crawler soar through the sky, most viewers are wondering why Spider-Man looks more like his video game counterpart than the actual video game equivalent. Even though there are a couple of solid shots of the webhead swinging through the city, the bad far outweighs the good. Even though the special effects in the sequel are light years ahead in quality, this just makes the CGI in the first film look more than a little underwhelming. Number 7. Rogue One – A Star Wars Story Now, Star Wars fanatics were so psyched to see Darth Vader in Rogue One that they never considered the possibility that the prequel would contain other iconic figures from the beloved franchise. So when Moff Tarkin revealed himself, viewers were blown away. Nobody expected to see the architect of the Death Star since the actor portraying him, Peter Cushing, was suffering from a severe case of, well, you know, being dead for 22 years. But thanks to the wonders of CGI and motion capture, the VFX efforts resurrected the legendary British actor, allowing him to portray his most famous role. But with the benefit of hindsight, it seems that fans originally watched this scene with rose-tinted glasses. Viewers got so caught up on seeing the deceased actor on the big screen again that they didn't realize that the special effects, well, they aren't as mesmerizing as they initially thought. Although Tarkin's facial tics and voice is spot on, his mouth, well, it's just weird. Not only does it move unnaturally, his lips don't move in accordance with his voice, making him look like he's being dubbed. Now, you have to commend the visual crew for pushing the effects as far as they could, but the scenes with Tarkin proved that technology, it still isn't quite there yet. 
Number six, the social network. Nobody exemplifies this philosophy that the best visual effects are the ones we don't notice better than David Fincher, and viewers of the social network were baffled when they learned digital trickery was used to make Army Hammer to pick the Winklevoss twins. However, there's one visual in the social network that, well, just doesn't work. While Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo are speaking outside a party, their breath is actually all digital. Although the visual was inserted to illustrate how cold it is, it looks like the pair have freeze breath like Superman or Iceman. What's worse is this visual is completely completely inconsequential. We can see the characters are shivering so we know it's chilly, why did the visual team have to force such an unconvincing effect to hammer this fact in? The sad thing is, is that once you notice the CGI breath, it becomes so distracting that you don't even listen to a word that either character is saying. Number 5. The Hobbit Trilogy Now, The Hobbit did not live up to Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings. Nobody is going to deny that, nor did anybody think that it could reasonably happen, but it doesn't change the fact that Jackson crafted a satisfying trilogy in its own right. The action sequences in The Hobbit are innovative, the battle sequences are epic, and the performances are astounding. Even though Lord of the Rings set the bar unnaturally high in terms of special effects, you'd expect The Hobbit's visuals to surpass it, right? I mean, since technology had advanced over 10 years and the prequels had over double the budget of its predecessor, how could The Hobbit's CGI not be out of this world? Well, ironically, the visuals are the trilogy's biggest detriment. Everything looks so artificial that you can practically see the green screen. Instead of using CGI to add to the spectacle, Jackson crew here relied on the technology like a crutch, swashing every shot with a smorgasbord of cartoonish VFX. This issue is extra noticeable when characters are substituted for CG doppelgangers. Because their bodies just don't move in a natural way, you never believe that they are really there for a second. Number 4. Forrest Gump For the most part, the special effects in Forrest Gump are absolutely breathtaking. Most viewers didn't have an inkling that the feather in the opening shot was actually computer generated. People are gobsmacked when they learn that every single picture ping-pong ball that Forrest plays with are digital. The green screen used to depict Lieutenant Dan without legs looks just as good now as it did back then. But there was one special effect that, let's face it, looked bad even when the film was released. Throughout the movie, Forrest rubs shoulders with many famous people throughout history, including John Lennon, John F. Kennedy, and Richard Nixon. Instead of relying on body doubles, the film digitally inserted Tom Hanks's character into archival footage to make it look like he was meeting these historic figures. Although these scenes look convincing at first, the VFX is all over the place when it comes to each character's mouth. If you analyze the lips of Nixon, Johnson, or Kennedys in these moments, they clearly don't match with what they're saying. And sometimes digital trickery is used to make the lips move in a certain way, which makes it look all the more superficial. Number 3. I Am Legend I Am Legend takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where a retro virus has either killed humans or turned them into vampiric mutants called the Dark Seekers. The story follows a virus virologist called Robert Neville, who does everything in his power to find a cure for the creatures to save what's left of humanity. Now, it's common knowledge that this adaptation is quite the departure from Richard Matheson's novel of the same name. Nevertheless, the 2007 movie's long shots and slow build-up helps to keep the viewer on edge. Unfortunately, all that tension disappears the moment that you see the Dark Seekers. Their movements and facial expressions are exaggerated to the point where they'd feel more at home in a comedy over a sci-fi horror. These visual effects are so heinous that viewers couldn't understand why the film crew didn't bring the creatures to life with actors wearing prosthetics instead of CGI. Well, that was apparently the original plan, but during the test screenings, the director worried that the Dark Seekers resembled angry mimes, so switched to CGI at the 11th hour. But upon watching the screen test, there's no question the original design of the monsters is vastly superior. Number 2. Black Panther Black Panther was an unprecedented success on every level. It was the first film with a black director to earn a billion dollars and ushered in a new age for Marvel. Although Michael B. Jordan's Fantastic Four tanked, the young star redeemed himself in the eyes of Marvel fans by playing one of the best villains in the franchise. All in all, there is a lot to love about this film. But one thing that stops this film from possibly being seen amongst the MCU greats is the rather atrocious special effects. This is ironic since Marvel has always prided itself with pushing visual technology as far as it can go. After all, it was the first studio that pretty much perfected de-aging, but in Black Panther, the VFX are astonishingly shabby, especially in the final battle. Because the visual team only had six weeks to animate the fight with T'Challa and Killmonger, simple things like shadows and textures were compromised. Also, it's nearly impossible to know what's happening since the scene well, is really, really dark. 
And number one, The Irishman. In terms of acting, directing, story structure, and editing, The Irishman is almost perfect. Sadly, the de-aging effects used for Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Al Pacino never stop getting in the way of Martin Scorsese's remarkable movie. To make these actors look up to 50 years younger, each of them wore motion capture sensors on their face and body. However, the final results look so awful that you'd swear the characters on screen are pure CG creations. Even when the effects look impressive, the characters just don't move correctly. When we see De Niro's character in his 30s, you just don't buy it because he moves like a man in his 70s. If this special effect was an issue for only one of two scenes, then viewers would be more forgiving. But since the de-aging is noticeable throughout the entire 219-minute runtime, it stops the Irishman from being better than it should be. The fact that there are YouTubers and freelance VFX artists who are able to create more convincing de-aging effects for these scenes without a $200 million budget does make The Irishman all that more disappointing. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 great movies with terrible CGI. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, so you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself with love and respect, both physically and mentally, because you deserve all of the best things in life, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and I want you to go out there and utterly smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.